What the fuck are you guys doing? It's Thursday here on Vlogging Life. It's a day. It's cloudy as a clown for Thunderbangers tonight. And, um, we got a little bit of nice time. So what I was thinking was I wanted to try something. I wanted to try and wash the Trans Am and just see how bad the damage is on it for body work and all that. And then, uh, go from there. Definitely, whoever gets that car, whenever I decide to sell it, that's the other reason I want to wash it, so I can put it up on online and get rid of it. Um, but whoever does buy it, definitely going to need to get her up on a hoist. Because when I moved it, it felt fine in reverse. But when I put her into drive, it sounded like she was dragging something. Mm. I'm hearing thunder. Fuck it. As you can tell, she's a filthy bitch, especially around the here gas tank here. The roof really took a lot of damage too. It's all coming off the roof to paint. And off the hood over there and working its way up. It looked even worse inside the car. So what I figure is, is this black shit, like I showed you before, you can scrub that right off. So what I'm gonna do is get a bucket, put some soap into it. We're going to use probably a combination of hand and that brush to see if we can get all that black shit off. Then we'll get an idea as to how bad the car actually is. That's my thought anyway. So let's pitter patter. Well, I got dark in a hurry. It's pissing rain over there. Look, you can see. You can see the rain from that cloud. Let's even get a super zoom on it. Yeah, it doesn't have to focus on right now. Oh yeah, she's pissing from over there. Big times, big time pissing. But I cleaned up the back quarter a bit. Still has a little bit of work to do on it. And probably don't really see much of a difference. Let me show you the roof. So I cleaned up this part of the roof here. I prove it, how that's a divider. That's just from three years of sitting in that spot. Collecting dirt and it getting stuck in the paint. I would have had a good coat of wax on it. Probably wouldn't have done that, but fuck is she ever noisy up there, eh? So I don't know if I'm gonna get much done because the only reason why I came out now to do this is I said I was supposed to thunder bang tonight at around eight o'clock. And currently it's like five o'clock and look at it. Son of a bitch. Well, I guess Mother Nature is gonna rinse off my car for me. Son of a bitch coming down like a mother figure out there right now. Who knows, I got a good lightning bolt on, on Vidya. I just saw an arc over there and it looked pretty awesome. So I was letting Mother Nature watch off, wash off the roof of the uh, Trans Am there. Save on my water bill. I did close the window on the truck, yes, okay good. Oh, like, like, 8 o'clock, boys. Supposed to be doing this at 8 o'clock. First part is, it's supposed to do this all weekend. Tomorrow, Dad wants to come over after I get home from work. So that we can, uh, we can fucking do up the, uh, the back shed there. Fill it up into the box of the truck and then deliver it on Saturday. But, for freak's sakes, look at this rain. Who does this tomorrow? Who the hell wants to be fucking firing shit into the back of a truck? Oh yeah, it's gonna storm at around eight o'clock. Fuck you, Weather Network, you piece of shit. Yeah. Ah, Jesus, Murphy. Like it's coming in right up there. <laughs> My barbecue's getting saturated right now. Like, I need this because I bought some ribs. I wanted to do ribs tonight. I don't want to do them in the in the uh, in the air fryer. I wanted to do them on the barbecue because I've never tried those ribs in the barbecue before. Son of a bitch. Ah, this won't last though. It's coming down way too fucking strong. But it's kind of refreshing. All you felt was, uh, well, you, oh Jesus, that was a nice one. All you felt was like this overwhelming sense of, uh, a cold come in, and all of a sudden it just started pissing like it's doing now. Yeah, 
Thunder banging like a motherfucker out. Gotta love the weather, eh? Oh, I wish we could have a nice weekend though. It'd be great. It'd be super great. Quite possibly fantastic. Did I also mention I'm stranded in my garage until this calms down? I could make the run to the house, but I got my e-dart on me and I got like this camera. I'll throw some lights on in here so we can actually see what the fuck's really going on. Yeah, that's a little better. Get some lights going. Well, fuck, let's grab a seat and watch this storm play out. Yep. And grab a seat and just chill out. See if we can catch a bolt on tape, eh? And by that I mean on SD card. Fuck, she's coming down violent. Look at the, uh, look at the hood of the truck. We're gonna just take a pounding. Like a rock. Eh? Fuck. Oh yeah, I'm getting a little wet, but it's actually kind of refreshing, so I'm just gonna let it happen. Yup. Just gonna let it fucking happen. Well, I'm guessing the uh, Trans Am's roof is nice and clean now. Huh. Should have thrown some soap on the friggin' truck. Let it clean off some of the shite. Well, floor's getting a washing. Yup. Alrighty, well, I went and got the gun, took it off the hose, put it up high. Soap and water right here. Can't do any more. Fucking weather cocked me over, despite what the Weather Network said. Remember, people, don't believe in Weather Network. Fucking thing lies more than it tells the truth. Stupid percentages. Anyway. Well, I'm gonna make my way inside because not much I can do out here. Fuck. Looks like I'm air frying the ribs tonight. Son of a bitch. They're on sale too for like five bucks for, for a rack of them. So I got two racks. We're going to do honey garlic tonight. And I got some original ribs in the freezer as well as a couple steaks. So should be good. Should be good. All right, fuck. Let's make our way inside. I got to go make sure none of those windows are taking on water. Let's go. It's been a while since I've gotten caught in a rainstorm like that. Fucking shirt soaked. Well, it's 10 to 6 and I'm getting peckish, and I don't know if it's still raining outside. Uh, I really don't want to air fry those fucking ribs. I'd rather barbecue them, so let's head back up to the garage. Doesn't look like it's raining out there. The puddles aren't really rippling, so we're probably okay. Yeah, that's. I, I want to do the ribs outside. I want to do them on the barbecue. We've had them in the air fryer so many freaking times. I've never tried them on the barbecue. I did have that run rack, but. It was, <laughs> What the fuck are you barking about? What? What? What are you barking about? Fucking weirdo. Anyway, so we're gonna do the rack on the on the barbecue because I've always wanted to try it like that with this kind where they've already been marinating and, and things. So let's pitter powder and have at her. I think Oreo's trying to say there's something under the couch. What are you doing? You need to stop that. Well, I'm gonna take a look. I don't know what Spazzy McGee's spazzing about. There's fuck all there, so. Anyway, let's uh, get out to the garage and barbecue. Well, on a lighter note. Car cleaned up, not too bad. Roof is a little fucked, but now you can really tell it's fucked. It still has a lot of stuff to come off of it. Obviously, I had to quit prematurely because of the weather, fuck's sakes, but um, all in all, I could probably clean this up, make it look a little bit more presentable. Sure. So these are the ribs that I bought, and they're by Irresistible, called Fully Cooked Pork Oh, they're already cooked? Great. Probably don't even need to barbecue them, eh? Well, fuck a duck. Probably put these in the microwave. Oh no, there is a barbecue. There is a barbecue section here. There's an English version of it too. Yeah. So, um, pre barbecue to medium, whatever that means. Move ribs to the side, extra sauce in bag. This is gonna be awesome. All right, let's clean the barbecue off. Ah shit, here we go again. Fuck's sakes. 
but it does bring in a cool air which is nice because it was 26 degrees celsius here no that doesn't sound like much for you people in the u.s hitting the 98s fahrenheit's and shit up here when you go from a frigid winter to a scorcher of a summer it's rather unpleasant not gonna fucking lie to you rather unpleasant just can't win with the rain today son of a bitch but these are coming along nicely hells yeah oh they smell so fantastic too shouldn't take much longer than it's om nom time i'm just gonna wait for the rain to calm down before i head back out there though sweet mercy fuck look at it out there jesus well i think i'm stuck in the garage boys pretty sure i'm stuck in the garage until this clears up gonna wait for it to calm down but it's not gonna calm down it's coming right in the garage i gotta close this bay door because we're taking on too much water again son of a bitch well, it looks like I'm stranded until this rain stops, and it doesn't seem to be letting up, so fuck. Did I mention I really have to throw a piss right now? So, like I said, tomorrow night after work, we're supposed to be doing the shed where we empty it out, put it into the box of the truck, and Saturday morning, Dad and I are going to go and dump it. Weather permitting. If it's fucking storming like this, the dump run can wait. I'm in no rush. It'll get done when it gets done, and if it doesn't get done today, it'll get done tomorrow or the week after, or whenever the fuck it gets done, to be honest with you. I am in 0% rush to get her done, but I really want to get it done, because that means this won't be in here, this won't be in here, this won't be in here. Actually, I'm thinking about when I sell the motorcycle, I might offer them, like, uh, hey, tell you what, I'll make it all sweet in the pot and give you this motorcycle trailer. I don't know if it can carry the bike. It probably can't. Maybe, I don't know. Fuck, we'll find out. But, uh, yeah. A lot more shit will be going back into the area back there, such as uh, probably this stand. Actually, what I want to do is clear out this corner, move that stand over there. But to do that, I need to move everything out of the garage. So, and the other day I was looking for, um, well, you already seen what I was going to show you, but I was looking for this thing, my uh, pump that had some herbicide in it, because I wanted to make my own herbicide using directions I found online. Apparently it works really great. So I was gonna do it, but when I went to go open the cabinet to see if it was in there, the whole fucking door fell off. But you know what, that's okay because that whole shelf system's coming down because this is gonna be getting converted. Take it easy out there, Storm. This is gonna be getting converted to a giant fucking hole in the wall, which is gonna be pretty sweet. And then I'll be able to just put shit in the back shed. It'll be awesome. And then when I get more room up here, then I can take this black bike, flip it upside down, weld the uh, motor mount, which is down there, and you can see she's looking... Oh, you going to focus there? There you go. She's looking pretty, uh, pretty hurting over there. So what I'm going to do is use some angle iron and weld it and brace it right to the tube frame. And that should be good enough. And then my battle plan is I have a brand spanking new 6.5 horse in there, a power fist, but, I also have this here Briggs and Strap-on fucking eight horse engine, which needs to be dewinterized. It's still got, like you can see the cover there on the muffler. Uh, this more than likely is a snowblower engine. So I need to like uh, take all the parts off the exhaust that redirect the heat from the exhaust back into the airflow and uh, pretty much good to go. And I'm thinking about taking the electric start off because fuck, I'll never use that on the mini bike. Got to have an extension cord to use it, so it's fine if I'm leaving the house. But when I'm in the field, I'm going to be using the rip cord anyway. So I'm thinking about taking it off for weight saving. But then again, I'm a fat fuck, so it doesn't matter, right? Well, fuck, I'm hungry. I got to piss, like big time piss. There's no toilet out here, obviously. So I guess my meat's getting wet. Fuck it. Pitter patter and head her into the house and get a little saturated. Not filming this. And I got a soaker. For fuck's sakes, now it quits raining. Oh well, I got ribs to eat. Hey guys, it's Friday here on Vlogging Life. Truck's in the backyard. And we're gonna be hauling the shit out of the shed. Load up the truck. And then tomorrow, dump run. So it rained today at about, I'd say, 3 o'clock. And you can see the trucks back there. Yeah. 
It's not up here. It's not up here. No, there's back there. Yeah. So yeah, I rained today at about three o'clock in the afternoon, and then uh, it stopped. It cleared up. So, frigate. This is the only weekend I really have for a while that I'll be able to do this. You're probably saying, well, Adam, why is this the only weekend? What's really going on? Well, things have been getting slow at work, so they gave us an ultimatum. They said either A, we can give you guys shortened shifts. In other words, four to six hour days. So Monday to Friday, I would work uh, from 8.45 to either 12.45 or 2.45, Monday to Friday, cut and pay. Not good when you just bought a new truck. If I didn't have the new truck, I probably would have taken that option just to have more time to make videos and stuff, but fuck, this is not the future. Um, and the second option was to get fast-tracked into after-hour training. So basically become a jack-of-all-trades, know how to do everything without having to ask for help. And get my 40 hours a week so I said fuck let's do it now the only problem is this comes with the downside which this is the reason why I stopped the daily vlogging was because I knew it was coming that this was gonna happen they already told us this was gonna happen so I figured well we'll stop the uh, dailies and just go to upload whenever the frig possible and then I made it into a Saturday schedule but I probably won't be able to hold that much very often because part of after hours requires me to work weekends. And the weekend shifts are 12 hour shifts. You either work 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. There's no way around it. So this coming weekend, this is my last weekend off. Next weekend I'm working 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. I do get a day off in the week, I get Thursday off, but whatever. I just wanna get this dump run done and I'm just gonna start making videos and uploading them whenever the fuck I want rather than doing it to a schedule because I'm just rewinding up my hose right now. Dad's coming over to help with the dump, filling up the, of the truck. He's better at that kind of Tetris than I am, so bring it. Bring in the pro whenever you can, right? Just wanna roll up my hose. So I already ran over it once. Don't really want to do it again, and there is vlogging dad coming in. Yup. Probably gonna park right at my spot. Oh yeah. Like he fucking owns the place or some shit. Well, we ran into our first snag with the garage. We got a lot of it cleared out. There's a bunch on the truck here, but gotta reorganize that obviously. Um, you see where that cement meets up with that wood? That's the garage's floor. This floor's a lot lower. This plan is not gonna work. I think these lights work though. Yeah. But it's but careful. Oh you brought your thing? Yeah, this is uh, the main junction bringing in power from the garage. This one here. Yeah. Right, this one. No, that one there goes up to the light. Oh no, that one goes right into the garage. It's this the yellow one. one. It's the or the white one. one there, yeah. So I'm not quite sure right. what we're gonna do. Probably just gonna use this for storage. We're not gonna bust a hole through the wall. Back. Dad needs a straight, straight screwdriver, so we gotta go fetch him a screwdriver. Not the kind with orange juice and and vodka either. It's a shame we can't blow a hole through the fucking wall. Son of a bitch. All right, you guys. Sorry, I didn't do much filming, but I overestimated the size of my truck. Probably happens more often than ever, but. Uh, Dad's gonna come back tomorrow. He's gonna bring his trailer and we're gonna finish it off. Still a lot of work left, but like I said, that problem with the garage being higher than the actual shed. So either the shed was built first, or is it over here? And then they built the garage afterwards, or the other way around, we're not sure, but pretty much fucked. So I'm leaving my truck back there for tonight. We'll deal with that tomorrow. So yeah. Right now, I gotta go eat. So remember from the last vlog, there was that orange cat in the backyard? So Dad and I are sitting there fucking ripping shit out of the garage, putting it in the truck. When all of a sudden, in he comes. 
fucking jumps in the freaking garage in the shed and he's like sitting in the back where, where the shelves are just watching us I'm like I'm a kitty I'm a kitty he looks pretty uh I want to say malnourished I'm pretty sure that cat don't have a home and I feel bad for him but you definitely can't come and live here like that's I can't have that we already got scampers and she's a fucking handful and well you know that thing so that can't happen anyway mom gave me some chicken fucking right on so I'm gonna go and fuck with this and uh, I'll talk to you guys in a bit alrighty people well it's Saturday here on vlogging life and vlogging dad's already outside he was gonna be here at 10 it's 9 45 so whatever anyway we're uh, he brought the trailer over so we're gonna put a bunch of shit in the trailer a bunch of shit in the truck and we're gonna do one single $30 rip to the fucking dump and get rid of it all so without further ado let's pitter patter Oh, just a quick update for you guys. So we got the trailer full of all the wood because at our dump, I don't know how it worked at yours, but they separate the wood from rubbish. Well, they got different sections for everything. Organics, wood, um, so on and so forth. Dad wants around my shovel. I'll show you the shed there in a minute. So pretty much got the wall taken down in there and pretty much all the crap out of it so that's right on so as you can see the garage definitely sits a lot hotter than this shed so that's fucking awesome and that wall is pretty much going yeah i'll take a part two in there after let's just load the rest of this wood into the trailer which is already over falling over falling yeah and another thing is is a lot of people wanted me to off-road the truck well Guess you can see I did. This isn't a road, and I was off on it. So I even climbed up this little hump. It was fun. Tested out four by four in diff lock. Probably didn't need to, but did anyway. So fuck it. All right, let's go see if we can take a look inside the shed here. See how much new room we have. Hey, look! You can see sunlight. So yeah, but we gotta get a piece of plywood. Cover that? And put it there and... Well, you got a couple of chunks in the, yeah. in the truck. So, this is what I'm talking about over here, guys. This is fucked. So, that's like, uh, Dad's playing plow. The fucking cameraman is always in the way. Imagine that. Just like Survivor. Holy fuck. Okay, I better get out of here before he throws a freaking grommet at me or some shit. Fuck sakes. Okay, what's the, what's the battle plan here? Here. Pretend this is you portion that. We're gonna portion that like that. Okay. So that's gonna see it from the ground to come down. Yeah. At your opening, we're gonna put a little ramp. Okay. And over there, we're gonna close all that up. So you're gonna need so many baggage in that. Well, I'll have to figure out how much. And then I'll have to get up Rona or Home Depot at some point in time and. Figure it out. I have one and a half at home that I'm going to give to you because this is too much still. I don't own a wheelbarrow. Do you own one? Yeah. Okay. What I, what I don't own. I would say, but camera's rolling. <laughs> You're like, hey now. <laughs> so yeah, so right here, guys, this is where we're going to cut the door from here. To that stud right there, so uh, it might be to that stud. I don't know exactly where it is. Right here is where the stud is on the inside. It's right there. Okay, yeah. so but where's that uh, that round one? That's what? the round one. The round one. Yeah, the beam. The round beam. Yeah, that's right, right around here. Okay, so we gotta put a four by four on that side. We'll leave the beam there. No sense. They can put a four by four on the other side and cut the long side of the four. And the four by four is gonna hold the integrity up, eh? Everything up. Okay. So, and then the, the, the other 4x4, four four, well, we'll have to drill a hole, find out where it is. Well, fuck, we got a 4x4 four four right here. Oh, well, yeah. It yeah might that's be actually long. holding shit up. Yeah, and where's the other one that I had here? It might be long enough, too. It's right outside the normal. Probably already threw in the... Uh, Why do you want it long enough to go on this side? No, the other side. Oh! Oh! Then I don't have to get none of that work. Well, oh! Okay, well, let's pitter-patter. 
So while we were fucking around in the shed, Dad came across this. We opened it. This creepy as fuck thing was inside of it. Look at this. It's like some broad laying in a fucking canoe with a cigarette. Oh no, that's a towel. Oh, that's a leaf, my bad. She's covering her naughty parts. But, yeah. What the, what, why the hell was that in the garage, eh? What's this? What, there's more of these fucking things? Oh, let's, let's take a gander, see? Let's take a gander, see? There's like a bunch of them. Let's see how fucking creepy this show can get. That's some fucking creepy shit right there, boys. I think I'm gonna hang on to these. Fuck it. Holy shit, boys. They're allowing people to ride in that thing this weekend. My buddy paid 970 bucks to take a rip in the gunner turret. Friggin' decent. Friggin' decent. Aw, oh, hells yeah. Alright guys, I made it to the dump. That's right. Hells yeah. Check this out. Not a bad load. First time ever driving the truck and actually using it as a truck. And my first time ever towing a trailer. Never done that before, so that was pretty fun. Pulled it like a champ. Didn't even feel like it was there. Kept checking in the rearview mirror. I had to make sure it was there. Didn't, wasn't sure if the ball let go or something, because let me tell you. Freaking truck just pulls. Anyway, let's empty the shit. He was we a good the... boy. What's that? He was a good boy. Oh, for fuck's sakes. All right, let's empty this trailer. All righty, I'm home. We're done for today anyway. I still got to go pick up 10 bags of concrete or ready mixed cement. Oh, uh, that'll be happening at some other time. Don't know if that'll get on video. But uh, we picked up some gravel from the dump, came back, poured it out in the shed, leveled it all off. Next step is uh, cement, but dad had to leave there. He's uh, taking care of my niece tonight. My brother's got things, so that's happening. And uh, I'm thinking I might have a fucking shower because I'm a sweaty bitch and I feel gross. So, pitter patter. Alrighty, guys. Well, I came back in the house, had a shower. I felt gritty. Pretty gritty. But um, there's more work in the shed. I'll show you that. I'm going to go outside. We're going to fire up the barbecue. <laughs> this is too cute. Look at that fuzzy bum. Look at her. She's all comfy wumpy. Who's a buddy? Who's a buddy? <laughs> it was funny because dad came in the house to rock a piss and she does not like anybody else in this house but me. Like she is so afraid of people. It's, I don't know. I don't know why she doesn't like other people, but she really doesn't. And uh, I came in the house afterwards. I can't remember what I was doing. I came in here, oh, to get us some water, because we're fucking thirsty or something. I can't remember now. But when I came into the house, she was meowing loudly. She was like, meow, meow, all pissed off because dad came into the house, and she's just petrified of anybody who's not me. She's such a weirdo. You're such a weirdo, kitty. Yes, you is. You're a lot smaller than orangey out there, though, that's for sure. Alrighty, well, this thing's turned on. Yeah, this thing's turned on. It's cooking away, so we'll let it do its thing. It's heating up. I just put the corn on there anyway. Who gives a fuck? And we'll let her heat up, scrape her off. And we got this delicious son of a bitch to cook. Alrighty, dinner's on the barbecue. We'll let that cook up for a bit. Let's go for a rip to the backyard. And I'll show you what's going on in the shed, because I never filmed there. The last thing I filmed was at the dump, I believe, and then I was back home. So you guys didn't get to witness anything. And so it's all cleaned up back. You can fucking tell my truck just ripped up my lawn, eh? It's so soft back here. Soil's fucked. But um, basically we put the remainder of the shit back in here. And I don't know what's in this box. I think that there's drums for Guitar Hero. But this is what we did. We got some gravel from the dump and then laid it down and flattened it out as much as possible. So we're going to get about 10 bags of quick uh, drying concrete, mix it up, dump it in there and fill in this hole and then dad has a, he explained he's going to build a ramp in here. So that should be uh, interesting so that we can get like snow blowers down here. I won't be able to put the lawn tractor down here, but like the lawn mower can go down here, like the push mower, the mini bikes. You know, shit like that that I'm not going to use in the winter. Get them out of the garage and 
put them down here. And I was thinking that window there, well, you know how I have the solar panels and even this window here? Ooh, that's a big B. Oh, fuck. No, bud, that's glass. Can't go it that way. You gotta go at the door. Oh, fuck, and there's a hornet out there, too. Okay, we're gonna get out of here, because this is like the danger room. I'm not allergic or anything, but getting stung sucks. What I was thinking for those windows was setting up solar panel, and... Well, fuck, they could just fly out the window on the door, because that doesn't exist, eh? Gotta love that, eh? It's so clean, you can't even fucking tell there's a window there. Oh, that's because there's not a window there. Whatever. Anyway. What I was thinking was getting some solar panels. Would you shut the fuck up, dog? Jesus, Murphy. But putting solar panels in that window and in the other window and charging some batteries with it. Kind of like what I do in here with uh, the little shit solar panel that you see there in the window. Charging this one battery I have on the bench. And all that battery charges. There's a couple LED lights strung across the top there. But I um, think we'll do that in the back and maybe get some more batteries. I have a couple more kicking around that I can toss on there. And maybe setting up some sort of an LED array if I don't want to run off of uh, house power. What the fuck is that noise? Oh, popcorn. Popcorn in the cause from popcorn. Turn that over, but... Um, yeah, should be uh, should be pretty cool when it's all said and done. And we're probably just going to board off that broken window and just put a piece of plywood or something in its place. Should be pretty good. But anyway, let's let let's cook this dinner. What else I was thinking about is back there, you see that cardboard box that's hiding? Well, inside of that cardboard box is these two molds, and they're meant for making uh, stepping stones on the ground. Like, um, basically, you lay them in the location you want, you pour concrete into them, wait for the concrete to set, extract the mold, and then you got this like nice path for walking on. So I was thinking of doing something maybe in front of the garage here, like maybe digging this down a bit, extracting it, laying down a bit of gravel, kind of like what we're going to do in the garage, and then do stepping stones all here in front. Could be kind of cool. If it works really well, because I found out we're allowed to have fire pits in North Bay now, like in the city, as long as there's not a fire ban ongoing or anything like that. Um, but I'm going to do one of these days whenever I have a chance. Theoretically, I had a chance today, but fuck, I'm tired after all that work, so frig it. Uh, we're going to, uh, I was thinking about grabbing the weed whacker and knocking all those tall grasses down and cleaning that up. And then doing. We're using those molds and some concrete and making myself a patio over there, cement patio. And then putting the fire pit right in the middle. I think that'd be pretty cool. In my backyard in my own little resort because chances of me getting a vacation anytime soon are slim to nil. You know, a day like today, I could have totally benefited for YouTube to have a cameraman. Somebody to shoot the video while Dad and I were working. Because let me tell you, there were a lot of one-liners going around. It was fucked. It would have been awesome if somebody was holding the camera filming while Dad and I were like loading the trailer and Dad was like ripping apart the fucking shed and I was ripping apart the fucking shed and when we were at the dump throwing wood and because my goodness, some of the zingers that Dad got on me and I got on him Fuck, those got on tape, let me tell you. You guys would have laughed your tits off. You know, I honestly question if this is the reason why certain producers out there um, for YouTube actually get good quality videos. is because they're not holding the camera themselves and making the videos themselves. They have someone filming for them. They're probably doing the editing, but they have somebody else operating the equipment. And all they gotta do is do their shit. So it looks more like a sitcom, which is more appealing to the eyes than some asshole holding the camera talking to it. Like it's a sentient being. I know on the other end of this lens, there are sentient beings watching the video, but, you know, it's... That's why it's a, it's a vlog, right? Because I'm video logging my day myself, where a production... And that's what a lot of people on YouTube are doing nowadays, is productions. So having that extra person holding the camera, getting the shot, while you're doing work or doing whatever just makes for a better video 
and you can see like McJuggernuggets for instance he has Parker now corn before and that's why his videos look so pro is because he's not holding the camera somebody's always operating the camera and getting the shot and making it look good and professional where videos like mine are just me talking to a fucking camera while I hold it with the other hand so I don't know I saw this really cool product on Amazon it's not for sale yet though but it's like a, a backpack you wear it and it's got a bendy thing on it kind of like the legs on this tripod okay kind of like the legs on this tripod and it's got a camera mount on there and you can basically aim it and wear it off your back and it gives you a third person view but the thing looks long enough where I could probably wrap the arm around and have it in front of me aimed at my face so while I work I can have a camera on me and I can talk to you guys while I'm doing stuff or have it behind me and make like a third party or third person Warcraft video like imagine at the dump if I had that on my back you guys would have thought you were playing a fucking video game the whole time that would have been awesome Danny Hoozle, dinner is done so we'll kill the barbecue turn off the tank let's get the shit on the plate and go in the house I'm ready to eat well guys I just finished my dinner and I'm about to mix myself another drink and I figured I should probably show you guys this because people won't believe me and think I use vodka instead of rum but I didn't and you're gonna see that so you're gonna want to get a glass and put some ice into it grab yourself a bottle of rum I love Bacardi not sponsored you want to grab your bottle of no, no name Worcestershire sauce it could be a name brand too but fuck I'm cheap don't go too overboard with this shit you only need a dash you're not marinating a steak then you want to go to your Mott's Clamato fill the rest of the cup up with this and in the end you got the pirate Caesar or as he called it the dirty Caesar now you can go ahead and throw a hot sauce or whatever other spices you like in there I like sometimes if I can find it is to use the Clamato's uh, the Mott's Clamato uh, salt but I don't think I have any left I wasn't able to find it the other night and chances are I'm not gonna get any better tonight you can basically add whatever the hell you want to your Caesar to your own taste also a dirty Caesar is actually a Canadian thing where you pour pickle juice into your Caesar after you mix in your vodka and Clamato. Now I'm using one of these thermally sealed double walled friggin mugs, cups, whatever. So you would, wouldn't want to stir this up. However, um, I just shake it and none leaks out so fucking winning. And before anybody thinks I'm cheating here and that's not actually what it is, it totally is. I have no vodka in this house anywhere. Got some crown vanilla but I figured that'd be disgusting. Anyway people, down the hatch. Oh fuck, that's good. That's a good damn Caesar right there for you, boys. The sugar cane really uh, works against the Clamato juice and it gives it a very good flavor. 10 out of 10 Caesar drinkers would probably suck my straw. Or probably not for hygiene reasons. Oh hey guys, how the frig's going today? It's Sunday here on Blogging Life. Opening the bay door in the garage. Just uh, let this fucker air out a bit while we do some weed whacking. That's right, we're going to whack some weeds. I want to go and clean up. Uh, here, I'll show you. I think we're hacking these down alongside the garage here and seeing what's underneath. Uh, there was an old tire there. We dumped that yesterday because the dump takes them for free, so fuck it. And I want to get that bit back there that I was talking about yesterday. Chop it down. The whole reason why I don't mow there is I don't know if there's rocks there and I don't want to fuck up my blades because, well, taking the deck off the rider is a pain in the ass. So figure frigate I'll grab the weed whacker go knock all that down and uh, see what we can see so we got the GoPro session my only GoPro remaining well this one here the GoPro Hero 1 and 2 but uh, I like this one because it's small it's light and uh, takes a pretty good fucking 1080p 60 frame per second video so let's hammer down we'll get this on the weed whacker let's go whack some weed Sure at what point you guys lost visibility because I noticed the GoPro was pretty filthy in the end. So we got it all here done. 
that looks a lot better got here done got around the tractor done and then my weed whacker was starting to stall and let it cool down for a bit came over here blasted this all down as much as possible I forgot to grab that fucking thing and throw it out son of a bitch oh well and then I came over here and cleared a little bit of this up but that just caused major tangling because the shaft is really exposed on that weed whacker and well yeah and I wanted to do alongside the retaining wall but this was the main piece de resistance his gown boys his gown but it's soft it's a very very soft soil there so um probably no fire pit this year I don't know we'll see maybe I might have to get a guy to drop off a load of something but if I do a concrete slab, I'm going to need gravel. If I need gravel, I'm going to need a truckload. And it ain't going to be my truck loading it up into. So, probably going to uh, see about, uh, if I have to, look around and see if I can order a load of gravel. And get them to drop a dump truck back here worth and spread it out. Like, I'll dig up my, my section, which you can sort of see the outline of it there. Um, you can sort of see where the circle is, eh? So... I was doing a square slab on the ground and then putting like a fire pit on top of it or something or burrowing a hole down the middle and putting like another fire pit kind of like a, a cement hole in the ground if you will to put logs into and burn could be a good idea could be a bad idea I don't know we'll figure it out but I'm still kind of nervous about driving the lawnmower over top of that I don't know how that's going to play out I guess we'll figure it out as time goes. But I'm a filthy bitch now. Yep. Gotta grab my broom and see if I can sweep all this debris off of me. And, uh... Probably got a lot of... Oh, fuck. Zoom her out, bud. Zoom her out. Yeah, probably got a lot on my face, too. Oh, it is what it is, right? Weed whackers. They throw more weed than they whack. Bam! You know what I really hate about these new cameras, camcorders, whatever? Is the automatic lens closing system. Mine's not working right. I also regret cleaning this thing off before showing you how green it was. Holy... Good thing it's water, uh, water tight, eh? Like right now, I could throw this in a bucket of water while it's recording. It's still record. So I like about the session. They're waterproof without a case. The case just gives them structural integrity. Fucking right on. So that's pretty much all I wanted to really do today was clean that out. And I thought it was going to take longer than it did. So that's right on. Right now, though, my weed whackers, well, I think it's overheating because it was, uh, you pull the trigger and there was like no power going to it. It was smothering itself. So it might be running a little bit too hot, so I'll let her cool down a bit because I was thinking about maybe going in the front yard and uh, attacking this raspberry bush and bringing this down. Should be collecting these raspberries and making e-juice uh, flavoring for them, but fuck that. Buy my flavoring. It's cheaper. Less work. Let somebody else make the flavors. And I was reading your guys' comments about the Trans Am telling me I really, really wish you wouldn't sell it, but it's your car. You can do what you want and so on and so forth. And Oh man, let me tell you, I I really don't want to get rid of it, like, I have so many memories in this car, like, I've had this thing since, fuck, 2000, 2002, and, you know, I've had it for a good 15 years now, this December will be 15 years, no, yeah, so, I really don't want to get rid of it, I love this stupid thing, even though it's a slow-ass turd and every uh, every other modern four-cylinder on the market right now can beat the shit out of it. But, a lot of memories going to this car, right? Really don't want to get rid of it. So, and then it was brought to my attention, Adam, have you ever considered classic car insurance instead of regular car insurance? And to be honest with you, even though in the past I mentioned putting it on classic car insurance and that I had it on classic car insurance before when I was with the X, um, back then the deal with the classic car insurance was you weren't allowed to drive it to work. It was basically just a cruising toy, right? Bomb around in it on the weekend, go to, go to coffee socials, go to car shows, stupid shit like that that I'm not really into. But now with this new, um, I think it's called Garrity Insurance. They're based out of Thunder Bay. I believe, could be wrong, don't quote me on that. Anyway, um, they actually have an option where they ask you, are you driving the car to work? And you click on yes, and it ups your premiums a little bit. So I ran the numbers last night and it cost me $195 for the year, $195 for the year to put this on the road, as long as I have another vehicle, which is insured, which I have the truck, under a different company. 
and I would still daily the shit out of the truck because fuck I love driving truck now that I've been driving truck and the truck's a lot easier to get into than the Trans Am and because I put on so much weight since uh, I last drove the Trans Am it actually hurts getting into the thing I got this fucking crinkle right here in my gut right here right here feels like a fucking knife shank me so driving it right now hurts but it's motivation to fucking lose weight I guess and figure shit out but I don't know I really don't want to sell it it's my baby I've had it forever so I'm just gonna sit and spin for now but the bike is definitely going this fucker here I, I was like I was pondering like you know maybe I'll sell the Trans Am and keep the motorcycle and then when I want to just you know fuck around on the weekend go for a motorbike ride go for a motorbike ride Thought that'd be kind of cool called the insurance company up and uh, I told him, I said, listen, I'm going to get my M2, not this year, but probably next year. If I did it next year, uh, this is the bike. It's a 1984 XJ750 from Yamaha. And they asked me if it's all original. I said, well, it looks all original. I bought it used. Like, it needs a little bit of work. It hasn't been certified yet, but that'll all be done before insurance, obviously, because they need to see the cert slip before they'll even give me uh, insurance on it. So... They did the numbers up and it's going to cost me a lot of money. We're looking at $2,800 a year to insure this fucking thing. And the worst part about it is, as you guys seen how long winter lasted, that cocksucker held on to the end of April. Which means May, June, July, and August, maybe se and September, maybe October, but last year we had snow in November. So... Maybe around those times, I'll be able to ride it. So that's what? One, two, maybe six months out of the year. So I'd be paying for insurance the rest of the time for it to basically sit in this garage and wait till the next season. Now, that's not worth it to me. I don't, I don't fucking... Basically, when I'm paying in truck payments, I'd be paying for a fucking motorcycle insurance. Well, not really. But... Because, yeah, truck payments are 450 a month or something like that. And this would be around 200 and change a month. So I was like, yeah, fuck that. Not doing it. No thanks. I'll just uh, sell it to someone on Kijiji and uh, use the money to put towards the tonneau cover I want to get for the truck. Or maybe even a spray job on this fucking thing. Because my next question is, how hard would it be for me to do this spray job myself? You know? Fuck it, just because I think this here air compressor dad got me might be able to use one of those high volume low CFM guns from uh, from Amazon. I just never got the specs off of it of how many CFMs it is, and hmm, doesn't seem to be any writing on the box telling me what's inside, eh? Fuck sakes. Writing's probably on the back side. Here we're gonna do one of these. Nope, looks like it's just all cardboard back there, eh? Well for fuck sakes. Is it all cardboard back there? Oh, what do we got here? Looks like it's the same sticker. That's over here. Just shows. Son of a bitch. Doesn't even tell you how many gallons it is. I know Dad's is 30 gallon. Mine's probably a 20. Um, don't really know much more about it. I'm gonna have to research and see if it has the CFM. But if I can get one of those high volume, low pressure uh, guns or low CFM guns, theoretically, I could. I know how to prep a car. I've done it many times with my buddy Pierre back in the day when he, when he used to work at a Sundridge. Um, I go out there and we uh, we prepped his old neon, we prepped his uh, Mercury Cougar, and we prepped this little fucking lunchbox he bought. I think it was called a Sprint by Chevrolet or some shit. I think it was a Sprint. I don't know. It was a little lunchbox with one point some shit engine in it. Went zero to sixty in about a week and a half, and uh, literally ran on fumes for gasoline. So that's why he got it because it was cheaper to drive from North Bay to Sunridge with. But he showed me all the the ways how to prep a vehicle for paint. And let me tell you, it's a lot of work, but it's also a lot of common sense. And 
once you're done, the hardest, the next hardest part is laying down some paint. Don't mind me, I'm getting a drink. Holy fuck, boys, I was thirsty. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna let Cottontail Joe out here. Go, Cottontail, be free. Him and I can hang out here for a bit. But, um, yeah, I figure, like, to paint this car, if I were to go to the same color, all I would have to cover up is the tires, the big back window. I'm gonna remove the spoiler because I want to see if there's a way I can fix this. If not, I might uh, look at maybe getting another one, whatever. Block off the back here. That can be done with uh, newspaper or plastic wrap and mask and tape. Remove the license plate. Bag off the exhaust system so I don't get paint all over that. Either cover up or remove the handle. I believe there's screws underneath here to do so. Yes, there is. Cover up the lock. Cover up the glass. Cover up the glass. Cover up the tire. Leave the entire hood exposed. Remove the license plate and plate mount. Cover up the tire. Remove the antenna, cover up the mirror, glass, should be pretty fucking easy to mask it all off. The prep work though, that's where I'm not too familiar with because all I ever did was mask off the car. So I'm sure if I go back and watch some of Pisser's videos of him doing cars, he can give me some tips. But uh, I'm not going to take her right down. What I was thinking was doing some body work, like there's a little dent here, so I could fill that, fill that, sand this all down so it's rough. Do it all so it's all rough, and maybe lay down a coat of prime, or just say fuck it and throw paint right over top of it, using that uh, wax and grease remover from the body shop. I might accidentally be able to get this thing looking good. Hell, I could even change the color if I wanted to. Make it black so it matches the truck. Finally have my Knight Rider car. How are you always able to do that? Seriously. You want to know when you don't have a dog? When he's able to get stuck on a weed. Watch. Allow me to demonstrate his stupidity. I'm going to walk over here. He's stuck. He can't come to me. Oreo, come here. Come here, Oreo. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Pull the weed out. Come on, buddy. See? He, he, he can't do it. <laughs> he's just, he just can't. There we go, you broke it free, you figured it out, eh? Holy shit, give this guy a cookie. You're not getting a cookie. And my friends, that's how you know when your dog is really a cat. And not the kitty in the windows. Those are the boo-boos. She's all upset because Oreo's out here and she can't be out here. Because <laughs> if she comes out here, she'll fuck off on me again for two months and come back with more sores. Because that's what I need. Or vet bells for fuck's sakes. So something I'm thinking about doing later on, I don't know if it's gonna work, but uh, those molds I told you about yesterday in the video, thinking about taking this dilapidated brick and removing it. I don't think, I think that's just the bottom of the brick, isn't it? Oh fuck, the ground's in there. But getting that brick out of here and then maybe go in ninja some gravel, cut it out, gravel it flat, pound it so it's flat, and then uh, doing a test print with the molds maybe we'll do that on the next video I don't know but we'll do that in a video because uh, I was thinking that could look pretty cool there maybe do that and see how well it works and if it works pretty good maybe I'll do some more here and here and then here and here and then here and here and then make it look uh, a little bit more appealing to walk into the garage rather than Stepping on grass and potentially dog shit. Anyway, this stupid thing wants to go back inside. Don't you want? Don't you want to go back inside? <laughs> Fuck, you're warm, aren't you? Gonna bite that grass? Bite it. Get it, Oreo. Get the grass. Get this. What's this? Yum, 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 yum. It's so easy to make them mad at stuff. So I basically took out more ribs for tonight. Yep, ribs, corn. Thinking that's what we're gonna do for dinner. Ribs and corn should be pretty good. And uh, we got ribs, corn, good times. I gotta be in bed tonight by 10 p.m. Because I gotta be up tomorrow by 5.30 a.m. Because tomorrow is when I start my new shift in the new program, the after hours. So like I said at the beginning of this vlog, it's gonna cause some fuck goofery with the vlogs. So this whole me uploading every Saturday, probably gonna become more of a upload whenever I have a chance. 
I'm not going to be on an uploading schedule. I'm just going to upload when I can. So what I want to do now is get this footage off my video camera and into the editor so I have less work to do tonight. And then we're going to go barbecue. So let's pitter patter. Alrighty guys, I just went in the house and edited up the footage and holy fuck, it's another hour long video, eh? Holy shit. Who do I think I am, eh? But it's not an hour video every day, so that's not too bad. You know, kind of like a TV show. It comes out once a week, so go from there. Um, I just don't have any cliffhangers. <laughs> but uh, besides the point, I've got the barbecue fired up here. We're going to let it warm up. And uh, I've got another box of these ribs here and some corn on the cobs. They're little corn, so I'm making three. Fuck it. So I did some research on my air compressor to see what it puts out for power. And apparently it puts out 6.5 CFM at 40 PSI. And at 90 PSI it puts out 5.5, or 5, sorry, 5 CFM at 90 PSI. So, I did some research thinking, okay, well fuck, all the guns I looked at were 5 to 15 CFM. What the fuck? Is there a gun out there for this? And Mastercraft actually makes a gun that requires CFM, of uh, 3 CFM at 40 PSI. Well, I can hit those numbers, so I'm thinking I could buy a paint gun and quite possibly do a weekend project of spraying the Trans Am. Only problem is, is where the fuck am I going to spray it? In order to pull it in here and spray it, I'm going to have to get, get rid of a lot of shit out of here. Like the tractors, snow blowers, mini bikes, this tent thing that I've never set up, all this shit here. This is... This printer's got to go to the recycling center. I got some other electronics to send there too. Not a big deal. But like, all this shit will have to get the fuck out of here. While the car is in here and I'm spraying. Like when I did the hood of the Focus, all I did was I pulled in the front end of the car, sprayed it, dried it, let it sit with the hood over with the garage door open overnight. The next day I backed it out and it was fine. If I pull the half of the Trans Am in, do half, and then do the other half by backing it in, that's an option. But that would probably look stupid. So I don't know. Really don't know how the hell I'm going to fuck this pig. And this one goes out to an old YouTube friend of mine. Never actually met the guy, but he inducted me into this YouTube garage gang. And made shirts. Sent me the shirt a long freaking time ago. And I still wear it to this day. And on my back is the name, plus a bunch of other YouTubers that are part of the Garage Gang. Pretty freaking cool. And it was funny because uh, I had some, some questions about cars a while back, and he commented. He's like, dude, you're part of the YouTube Garage Gang. You have our support if you need it. Just contact us. I kind of forgot because, you know, I'm not really a mechanic. I'm not mechanically inclined. I understand how to spin a wrench and stuff, but... You know, I'm not like my buddy Chuck who can, you can bring him a car and say he goes pating pow and he's like, oh fuck, it's the carburetor, it needs to be decarbulated or whatever, you know. Like he was, that's how Chuck is, he can just fucking look at a problem and know what the problem is and how to fix it and get it fixed. I'm not like, I do understand how an internal combustion engine operates, well, at least the logic behind it, but I've never done work like replaced a piston or removed and replaced a head gasket. So that's why I was kind of shocked when they inducted me into the YouTube Garage Gang because, well, shit. But I do love fucking around with my motorized recreational vehicles like the lawn tractor out there and the mini bikes back there and the snow blowers and the lawn mowers and fixing them and stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of fun, you know, figuring things out, seeing how things go together and how they work together as a unison, you know. Like how many times have I done work on this thing here? I repaired the carb. Got it working again. We repaired the deck. Got it working again. Still want to order new bearings for the towers, but fuck, she still cuts grass, so whatever. Not too worried about that. You know, on the, on the green snowblower back there, the old yard works. Hell, how much work did I do on that that one winter, eh? Christ, we replaced the entire guts of it. The entire drivetrain's been replaced, so that's got to count for something. And then Dad goes and gives me his, which is brand spanking new, fucking blows snow like a champ. After all the money I put into the green one. Fuck sakes. But these ribs are coming along great. They look fantastic. And the corn, well, it's going to be awesome too. So I'm super stoked for that. Dinner's going to be good tonight. Just been sitting in the garage listening to Tragically Hip. And uh, pondering things. Like, 
How the fuck am I gonna pull off these YouTube videos working all these new hours? I did the math, and this week alone, I'm gonna be clocking in 51 hours. That's right. Because I work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then Thursday I'm off, and then Friday I work 7 to 3. And then Saturday I'm back in to work at 7 till 7. And Sunday 7 to 7, and I don't even know what the fuck's going on next week. I know with these hours, basically the two weeks, like, you end up... The reason why people like the after hour shift is because you work like a whole fucking load of days in a row and then you end up getting like a whole bunch of days off. Like you end up working like, like you work like, uh, you know, almost 28 days straight and then you end up getting five days in a row off kind of operation, not including weekends. Um, so it gives you a, an area of dead space. So it's kind of like having a super mega long weekend or a vacation. And because I actually enjoy this job, um, I, it'd be kind of cool, you know, you, you burn yourself out for fucking 12 days and then you get a bunch of days off for 20 days and you get a bunch of days off. It's not too bad. Plus the extra money coming in is going to be nice too. I can't really complain there. And we're going to be learning a whole new level of skill sets, which is going to make us more valuable to the company, which is fucking mint. I'm going to keep trying to do these Saturday uploads. So I might film throughout the week because like I say, I'm getting off at three o'clock every day. Um, I need to go get a new sprayer bottle. I found this one here, pumped the shit out of it, loaded it up with just regular tap water from the garden hose on the side of the house, pumped it, pulled the trigger and it's not spraying. So I'm thinking the pump shot in it. Now, Canadian Tire sells these one gallon uh, upright pumpy things for chemicals and water or whatever you want to use it for. And they're about $17. So I'm thinking tomorrow night after work, we'll head over to Cambodian Tire, scoop up one of those, but that'll be on next Saturday's video. Or, you know, you guys are watching this next Saturday. Anyway, I'm gonna try and still aim for the Saturday uploads, Saturday at 5 p.m. I figure the 5 p.m. time slot's better because 9 a.m. your video ends up going missing really quick because a lot of people upload at 5. So I figure we'll go for the 5 p.m. time slot on Saturdays and I'll do my best to try and get some quality vlogs out to you guys on those days. The reason why I don't want to do the daily operation is because some days I don't do anything and picking up the camera it's like fuck why bother. But uh, we'll see what we can do to keep the flow going. I still enjoy doing YouTube, I just don't want to let it, you know, control me like it did before where, you know, everything I did was, let's fucking film that and stuff, and, and everything was all about getting footage, and it even got to the point where people were using that against me, like, oh man, you should come and do this, it'd be fucking amazing YouTube video and stuff, and I'd be like, yeah, you're right, I guess I should, and I kind of want to get away from that too, not... Not wrap my life around YouTube, but wrap my life around living, if you know what I mean. And that's what sometimes happens to YouTubers as they get so encompassed in the whole realm of let's make videos. It's gonna fucking rain again, isn't it? But they get so encompassed in the whole realm of let's make some YouTube videos and they don't even think about the life they're living or the people around them and how it affects them and stuff. And I'm not saying YouTube is what ruined my relationship with my ex. That was ruined since 21 Jump Street, but uh, you know, it's really hard to even consider a relationship with anybody when you want to film every fucking day and explain to them that you make videos for anonymous people on the internet to entertain them. They'll think you're fucking crazy and want to lock you up in one of those hug me jackets. I kinda don't want to be in a relationship, you know what I mean? At the same time, I kinda do. It's pretty fucked. It's a fucked up situation. But I just took the ribs out the barbecue, just put the corn on my plate, ribs on my plate, Let's go in the house, make a plate, fucking eat. I'm starved. Anyway, dinner's ready. I'm gonna go eat. Oh, that looks good. I'm anxious. So I'm pretty much gonna end the vlog here, people. We'll figure shit out as we go and uh, just give her as we go. Still gonna try for the Saturday uploads, as always. We'll see if we can pull it off. Can't guarantee every video is gonna be an hour long, but uh, it is what it is. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button. Hey, any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. And until next time, people, keep on vlogging.